How you doing? Good. You're pretty good at that thing, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just kind of, first of all, just kind of talk us through this past week. I guess last Monday morning, I mean, we talked to you on Sunday night, and then on Monday morning we yeah. learned that Gus was going to sign play calling duties to you. So mm -hmm. what was that moment like when he told you? I think Gus last night said he had it kind of been preparing to yeah. through the last few weeks, but just yeah. what was the week like for you leading into that game after knowing you were in the calling place? Oh, uh, it was good. You know, you definitely, you know, you always try to prepare yourself when you're in this role. You're always preparing yourself as if you're doing it anyway. So from that standpoint, it really didn't change um, anything. Um, just for me, just from a, on a daily basis now, just kind of get my thoughts together to really get confident in the things that we decide to do game plan wise. So it was a lot of just rehearsing when we're a certain parts of the field, you know, what we want to go with or what we decide to go with and that just you know staying in my mind and staying fresh from day to day so it was good though man I had really good help from our offensive staff and then our players you know they make it easy when they have confidence in you too man so that's the, that's the number one thing those guys had a lot of confidence in the transition and moves that were made and it made it, it made it really helpful you know going through the week and then obviously last night. Tim you also along, along those lines you're starting at your first game as basically mm -hmm. the play caller the yep. full time play caller you got a new quarterback going out there, yep. Brian Dylan Risk. Mm -hmm. What was going through my? I know early on before and during warmups, I saw you walk in the field by yourself, just kind of reflect. I mean, yep. what was that kind of that reflection? What was that moment in your mind about this this moment for you, and yeah. and how what it meant to you, and maybe in your career? Yeah. And everything like that? No, no, it, it was definitely really big, and um, you know, I just look back, you know, when you start coaching where I started at, you know, high school coach and and inner city Miami and just thinking back to so many guys that would have loved to be in this position, you know, in their career. A lot of guys that have been in it a lot longer than I have and done a lot more than me. You know, they just didn't get this opportunity in my career, how it's gone has put me in put me in this spot. And I, I didn't want to take that for granted. So I really just took all that in and just really wanted to own that responsibility to the guys back home that well, and even the young guys that want to be in this position one day. So that part of it, it got get a little emotional about, but it was good. It was fun. But more than anything again, like I said, man, I lean back on our offensive staff, on our players here, and on Coach Miles on and everybody kinda of helped me through that deal. Dylan, obviously, you were part of his recruitment. Mm -hmm. South Florida kid, you went to his yep. home. Mm -hmm. uh, what from high school to now prepared him for this moment? But Dylan's always been a fierce competitor. You kind of watch how he plays. Like, he, you know, he just lets loose. Um, you know, you watch him in the past game. He got a, got a clock in his head, knows how to get the ball out, knows when to take advantage of him. Let guys give him lanes where he can tuck it and run and create, you know, first downs on scramble plays. You know, he's, he's done that. I watched him do it at the high school level, at a high level, played a really competitive program, and that prepared him for it. And then just his time here, Dylan's still young. You know, a lot of people, I know you look at it like he's been here a long time, but he's a redshirt freshman, man, and he's, he's done a really good job of just, you know, waiting his turn and, and just, you know, Look, waiting for that opportunity to come. And I think from when the BYU game, we get to the end of it and we want to make a change and his opportunity came and Dylan ran with it. And he gets, you know, the starting nod this past week and he does again, goes out there and proves that he can be the guy for this team. So I'm really proud of him, really excited for him moving forward. A lot of fans are confused about where he was on the depth chart mm -hmm. and, you know, the changes in quarterbacks throughout yep. the season. What was he maybe not doing or what did he grow to do that yeah. you saw over these weeks to put him in this position? Yeah, just like I said, being a young player, man, they all, they all have, you know, have to deal with, you know, this, the transition at that position more than anything. They got a lot to learn. And, uh, you know, and Dylan, he had shown, obviously, some good things because he was always in the mix. It wasn't like he was a guy that didn't get reps for us in practice or anything like that. He was always in the mix getting his reps to prepare himself for if he had to play. But there's always these things that, you know, you need more reps and you need to gain more confidence to be able to put yourself in position to run with the opportunity. And I think when Dylan got that opportunity, he had gotten himself to that point where he and his teammates and everyone in his coaching staff felt comfortable with him to do it. And, you know, again, when he got it, he ran with it. So I'm proud of Dylan and where he is right now. I know you've been an offensive coordinator and a head coach at the yep. high school level, obviously calling yep. in your own plays in your offense. Had you done that before? I know at FIU you were named offensive coordinator, but that was right before you came yep, here. Yep, left right? a month later. Okay, so you yeah. never actually got to the season. <laughs> yeah. So this was your first time calling plays? Yeah, at this level, yes. Game? Yes, sir. Okay, so level. how would you describe I mean, I know you're not going to change the mm -hmm. offense in a week. You know, no. their plays are in there. But, like, do you have a certain philosophy if you had to – complete control of an offense, maybe going into next year or in another school or something, what what would be your off offensive mindset? 
Well, you know, given what you saw yesterday, I think um, just having a very balanced attack, I think that's super important. I think it's important to be able to you know, take advantage and get your guys the ball quickly at times to get it in space, especially to start series. But, you know, that can mix up from week to week based on who you're playing. But I just really believe in just making sure the ball moves around, especially when you got a good group of skilled players like we have. And I think yesterday was just a little bit of that. But more than anything, man, being able to run the football and being able to make sure that we own that part of the game, I truly believe in that. And I think that kind of opens up everything. So yesterday it played out kind of perfect to how I view running in, running an offense. And, you know, we like to continue doing that. Tim, Gus said, you know, giving up play calling duties allowed him to do more stuff with the defense yeah. and things like that. But I'm sure you leaned on him a little bit this definitely, past week. Definitely. And was he, what did he, maybe what advice he gave you? Mm -hmm. What sort of things did he give you? And was he ever in your ear yesterday about mm -hmm. maybe ideas for play calls during the play call? I mean, or did he pretty much just let you, it's your, it's your duty, you go do what we need to do? Well, yeah, and I think from, you know, from every game perspective, regardless, you know, who's a play caller, we all kind of give input through the course of a game. So, you know, that was no different from anybody. You know, you get input from, you know, your offensive line coach. You get input from your quarterback coach. And then, obviously, coach being an, a head coach that's been a play caller most of his career, he give input at certain times and in certain situations. So, yeah, he definitely did. But uh, I think the biggest thing during the week that made me comfortable is that, you know, he, he spent so much time with the defense, really showing me and our offensive staff that he believed in us to, you know, put together a plan that he, you know, helped us with at the beginning of the week, but be able to go out there and have our kids prepared. So I think that really built a lot of confidence, you know, not only in me as the play caller, but in everyone involved. So, you know, the closer we got to the game, he wanted to make sure that I knew, like, hey, I'm here for you when you need me to, but, you know, I'm going to kind of let you do your thing because I want you to be you. You know, I don't want you calling the game thinking and worried about, what you think I would want to call and all that. So that really made me comfortable in the seat because, you know, it's it's tough. When your head coach has been a play caller, you're always going to be worried, okay, what would coach go here? And he wanted to make sure he eliminated those thoughts from me the closer to the game that we got. And I really appreciated that more than anything, man. I just I talked to him last night after the game just – being thankful for him believing in me to do that because I know how important the play calling aspect is for him and what it's been for him in his career. This summer when we talked to you, you talked a lot about Jacoby Jones being a guy mm -hmm. that can step up. He's stepped up the past two weeks with 100 yards. Yep. Um, what's his emergence uh, helped Dylan and helped his offense? Um, him just gaining confidence from week to week. Uh, Jacoby's a guy that uh, I think I spoke about it last week in here where he broke his ankle in week three, missed the rest of the um, last season after that and then when he got here he didn't play spring ball with us got here in the summer you know tweaked his hamstring in the summer kind of took him out of summer workouts for a good while we get in the training camp he starts to kind of get around but he, he he's not fully confident and you know after all the injuries that he's had and you just watch him from week to week start to gain that confidence and right now he's peaking at the right time and um, I'm really excited for him and what it's done for our receiver room and our pass game as a whole so you know our quarterbacks feel really good about what he's doing now and it's, it's helping all the guys in our room really try to raise their level of play too. Take us through the Hail Mary just as you drew it up. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a play we've been, you know, we got that in our system for forever. It's just about like, man, you know, you, you get down to those situations, it's like, okay, we got this, we're going pretty smoothly right now. It's going good for us and we got a chance to get the ball past midfield. Dylan can, you know, he can reach the end zone. Do we take the mindset of, man, let's try to pop a run again and maybe just go into the half, go into the locker room happy. But man, our guys were feeling it. We were feeling really confident and just our preparation for that, you know, for that moment. And, you know, we wanted to give our guys a chance to go put another touchdown on the board and, um, you know, the the percentages of it working out that way probably aren't very high, but you know, yesterday things were going in our corner. They went they went our way. So I was happy that Dylan first of all was able to get the ball off and then, you know, all of our guys being back there in the right spot and in the right position to be able to come down with it. Randy did a great job of that. You like the way Dylan ran the ball? I did. I think he did a good job. You know, you can look at he didn't have the big he did have the one big scramble that was on a huge play. It was a third down and long and we were kinda in, almost in that backed up territory and he gets through there, they're playing cover one he gets through there that he's unaccounted for and he rushes for about 35 on that and that was a big deal but his other runs man to get us down to the 15 yard and 10 yard on five yard runs they were you know they were positive runs for us you know we weren't looking thinking that he was going to go out there and rush for 100 yards we know that's not part of you know who he is or what his game is but he's able to keep the chains moving and keep defenses honest in the run game and you know he did just that for us so I was happy about that. So, uh, this, was this this past week, was that the first week Dylan practiced with the ones exclusively? 
Uh, yes, it was. So you're still kind of learning. I mean, yeah. it's hard to say he's going to have that kind of performance every week. It's right. for unreal numbers. But are you kind of learning more about what he can do now that all eyes are on him as being the number one guard? Yeah, not, Were there not some only... things in that game that maybe surprised <laughs> you that maybe you hadn't seen before as well? Well, yeah, I think just the more he plays, when you're a young player, the more they play, you always see him get a little more comfortable as time goes. You know, And that's from week to week. That's from series to series. The game starts to slow down. So you're definitely seeing a little bit of that. And um, not only are we learning more about him just being honest he's probably learning a lot more about himself as you know with every series that he goes out there so you know it's I think he's in a really good spot right now in his development phase like he's in a really good place mentally you know going back and watching the film today as much as you know you pat him on the back you look at the stat sheet and it's, it's, it's a really good stat sheet but there are a lot of plays he watched on film today where he knows he could have probably made different decisions and not only in the past game because that position it goes on with a lot of things it's protection calls it's reads in the zone read game so you know all that stuff you know he kind of looks at it today and like okay I could have been better in a lot of areas to really make this a clean game for myself so I, I re, well we all really like where Dylan, is, where Dylan is right now man and I'm just super proud of him like I said man can't, can't say that enough because he, he really handled himself well. Do a couple more. Tim along those lines you know, such a big performance for Dylan mm -hmm. and a big debut. But you know now teams are going to have a film oh, with him now. Yeah. They're going to have opportunities. How do you kind of maybe temper a little bit of that just to, to prepare him that there's going to maybe be some struggles, you know, here at times, yeah. you know, on the road maybe, and you're going to mm -hmm. have to find a way to get through that. How do you kind of maybe work with him on that just to make sure it doesn't get too high and then too low? Maybe? Well, I think just, just what I said, that piece of just him, us going back and looking at the film and really grading it hard, just not, not letting him, believe that he's arrived when you can watch the tape and see that a lot of our decision making could have been better in, in some cases and could have put him in better situations on certain downs. So, you know, just making sure you point those things out and you're being firm about how you got to correct them. And, you know, that'll help him when those, when those adverse times do come, they'll be, he'll be ready to handle them a certain way. How has KJ Jefferson really mm -hmm. accepted this role? I, know, I saw he had the headset on yep. yesterday. He's been in Dylan's ear on the sideline. Yeah, KJ's done a really good job, you know, being a veteran player and going through a, a, a time when, you know, his role changed. He's doing a really good job with all of our young quarterbacks, and I think he, he has a lot to give all of them. You know, he's been through a lot in his career. He's been through a lot of highs. He's been through lows, and he's able to pass that knowledge on to those guys, and they really respect him. They really respect, you know, who he is, what he's about, and how he's handled all the things that have kind of transpired over the last few weeks. There's a drive where you get the ball on your own one. Mm -hmm. Twelve plays, ninety-nine yep. yards. But that first play, a pass play. Yeah. Take us through that a little bit. The confidence you have in Dylan to, to do that. Yeah, and, and and that's you know comes down to what he showed in practice this week. Because you know you practice all these different scenarios and you game plan these scenarios. And you come up with, you make you make your decisions on what you're going to do. And when we make, you know, you sit back and we get our backed up game plan. That was something that we felt they gave up when you watch tape. So you know you get in the situation like, okay, what do you want to call here? And, okay, we're going to call what we practice. We're going to call what we prepared our guys to do. And that was the number one play that we had. And Dylan, he operated it the way that we wanted to and practice when we went over it. And we had the utmost confidence that he would do the same thing uh, last night. And really the ball came out kind of bad. It was wet at the time. And Kobe did a great job, you know, of making the catch. But that's what you want your guys to do. You want your veteran players to be able to bail your quarterback out sometime on a bad ball. And Kobe did that and it got us – you know, out of that hole, and we end up being able to move the ball downfield. But that was a drive that we all take pride about as an offense. You know, everyone, our players, our coaches, but going 99 yards and finishing with a touchdown, that's that's who we want to be. You comfortable with him blocking too? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was the clip we showed today for his helmet sticker clip. But, uh, but no, it was great. It just shows who he is as a competitor. So, you know, whatever, whatever it takes to win. And that's what, you know, we always ask our guys before we leave um, the hotel before the game is, what are you willing to do to win the game? And that's what Dylan wanted to do. He wanted to win. He felt like he needed to make that block to put us in, not put us in position to do that. So, definitely, we, we love that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thank you all. Appreciate it.